If you're considering making a move to Florida and looking for honest answers to your most searched questions, from the cost of living and job market to weather and unique aspects like our wildlife, then this video is for you. Today, I'm sharing seven things you need to know before moving to Florida, including a question that no one ever asked that they should. Because let's be real, moving to a new state can be completely overwhelming and making the right decision could be the difference between you living your Florida dream and an absolute nightmare. And these seven topics are gonna to give you the information you need before deciding to call the Sunshine State your home. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here. And a little over five years ago, my wife and I, along with our three kids, sold almost everything we own, packed up our family and moved 1,200 miles south to the greater Tampa Bay area and have been loving it ever since. I'm also a licensed realtor and a team leader here with the True Living Group, where my team and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Now, before we get into this list, I wanna share a few quick things. I know this is an easy decision to make because we went through the same things you're going through right now. We had all the same questions, right? Where will we live? Is it safe? What are the schools like? What about hurricanes? What about the weather? You know, what do we need to be concerned about? And in my personal experience over the past five years, the things we were most concerned about so far have turned out not to be that big of a deal. And just hear me out, I'm not saying you shouldn't be concerned. But what I found are the things that have really challenged us are the things I didn't expect and we didn't even know to ask. Now, with that being said, I've built this list over the past three years and through hundreds of Zoom calls with people just like you who are considering moving to Florida. Now, keep in mind, it's not possible to answer every single question you have in this one video but I will tackle your most frequently asked questions. If a specific question you have doesn't get answered today, feel free to leave that in the comments below. I personally respond to all the legitimate questions down there. And if you really wanna go deep, feel free to schedule a Zoom call. All of my contact information is listed down below. There's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule that call at your convenience. Heck, you can even connect with me on Instagram, whatever works best for you. Now let's get into this list. If you're anything like me and Kate, one of your primary drivers of moving to Florida is most likely our weather. And it is absolutely incredible for roughly five to seven months out of the year. And then there are some challenges. And I know people love to come in here and sell that it's all, you know, sunshine and sugar sand beaches, but like we have our challenges as well. Now, here's what I wanna say. Five months out of the year, our average temperature, our average high temperature is 70 degrees, okay? Now it's not a perfect 70, it's somewhere in the 70s. Another four months of the year, our average high temperatures are in the 80s and then uh, July, August and September, our average temperatures are 90 plus degrees. It is warm. Those months are what I've heard people refer to as oppressive. And I gotta be honest, <laughs> that is a fair representation. Would I trade it for the dreary cold weather that I had in Detroit with the snow and the broken car? Absolutely not. not there's no chance that I am making that exchange even with the other weather challenges we have, right? And the reason being is because, you know, people ask me all the time, they're like, Juan, what are the, some of the main differences between living in, you know, in the Midwest and living in Florida? Well, there's a lot, of course, but I always reply in the same exact way. You do not have to shovel sunshine. And to me, that was super important. To my wife, that was super important. So if you wanna know why we came down here, besides this beautiful little nugget here and this beautiful lady here, um, you know, it's not that complicated. Let me just give you a slight glimpse here. What's going on? Oh, it's phenomenal. Yes, that's real life, folks. Look at that sunset. It's unbelievable. When we made the decision to move here, we were drawn by the 250 days of sunshine, those white sugar sand beaches we were talking about, and just the sun hits different, right? You need vitamin C, S-E-A, and vitamin D. I mean, this really does change your mood. It changes how you operate. The people that we um, surround ourselves with are um, very active, and you'll find that in Florida in spades. People are active, even our seniors are active. When I go walk Stella in the morning, we've got a 90-pound Doberman. When I go walk her around in the morning, I regularly see somewhere between 15 and 20 people out doing the same thing. Some young adults, um, some families, 
families, some seniors, but everybody's active and it's because of our beautiful weather. Now, again, it doesn't come without its challenges. During those same summer months, roughly from June to September, um, even in October, we have what's referred to as our rainy season as well. And I always make a joke about this. Like it feels like it rains every single day, sometime between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. And, and that's for good reason. It's actually very welcome at that time period because you know those are our hottest months. Um, people typically get out in the morning, they'll do their exercise, or they'll do their yard work sometime be before 10 a.m. usually. You'll, everybody kind of comes back indoors, enjoys the air conditioner, and then you'll see people start to come out as the sun starts to set. Um, and you know, again, you can go catch a gorgeous Gulf Coast sunset here, and those are the things that really draw you to here, but it does come with its challenges. And that leads us to the next thing we're gonna talk about on the list, which is hurricanes. So I remember what it was like when we were going through this process. Kate and I knew for about 10 years we were gonna to move to Florida, but we weren't quite sure where. We were thinking about Jacksonville, we were thinking of places like Deltona, we talked about Orlando, Miami and Fort Lauderdale weren't ever really on the list. Um, and we really thought that we were gonna live in Jensen Beach, Stewart area, which is uh, Port St. Lucie. That is um, like the north side of South Florida, if you will, um, on the Atlantic side, on the ocean. And, you know, Tampa really wasn't on our radar. It, it was on the list, but we had never really spent any real time here. So we weren't able to make that qualified decision, but we came and enjoyed and absolutely fell in love with it. That's a whole nother story. But one of the things on our list that really kind of helped put things in perspective for us is we started Googling, right? Worst places in Florida for hurricanes. And you know, you see all the insurance websites then, and it is like going to WebMD. Right? If you've ever uh, found a little spot on your skin and you go to WebMD, or if you've got a little stomach ache and you go to WebMD, the next thing you know, um, you have the worst possible diagnosis on the planet. You have scared yourself terrible and you don't know what to do. And that's what it was like for us when we started looking at weather patterns and hurricanes. And man, it was pretty gnarly. Now, it said that Tampa Bay actually was um, ranked higher in terms of risk. And the irony is it's been over 105 years uh, since Tampa Bay has taken a direct hit by a hurricane. Now, we've had glances and run-ins, and trust me, there has been scares, and I'll share that with you here briefly, um, since we've lived here in the five-year period. But for whatever reason, and there is folklore that uh, the Native Americans are protecting this due to sacred burial grounds, and listen, I'm not here to get into whether it is or, or it isn't because of that. Um, <laughs> we'll take whatever we can get in terms of that luck. I mean, we live very close to the water. We're less than two miles from the Gulf of Mexico. So this is something that we wanted to take in strong consideration. Kate gave me a few specific rules when it came to moving to Florida. She wanted to be within 15 minutes of the Gulf of Mexico, so her and the kids could go to the beach and we love the beach. Um, we're beach babies, we're, we're a beach family, we love going, and she wanted to have a pool. Those were her two requirements, and you know that may not be for you. If you live a little bit more inland, you don't have these types of challenges. You're still gonna face the winds, but flooding and those things aren't a real problem for you. Just keep that in consideration. But when you look at those lists, man, they can terrify you. Now, here's what I'll say. Over the five years we've been here, there have been three hurricanes in the Gulf that we needed to prepare for. Two of them were quite serious, and one of them um, ended up not being a whole lot of, of, of anything, which is kind of on par for it. Now, hurricanes, according to the National Weather Center, have become more frequent, and I'm not here to argue whether they have or they haven't or why. I just know that I live here, and it's something that I have to deal with. Now, I chose that right? This was our decision. We understand that there is risk involved with living so close to the beach. Now, here's something that I want to share with you that I didn't know to ask. This is one of those, those things that we talked about earlier. We got very lucky and um, the agent we chose to help us relocate down here, I wasn't a licensed realtor here yet. I was selling back home in Detroit, but not here. The agent who helped us, we didn't know to ask the questions. Now, he may have known, but we didn't have these conversations. And he's a great guy and I'm not blaming him for anything. And as a matter of Matter of fact, we got in a really good spot. Um, we didn't know to ask the questions about like, where are the flood zones? And that's super important for a lot of reasons. Number one, your insurance on your home, if you live in a flood zone, can be outrageous at points, okay? There are areas that it's not as bad, and there are areas where your home is literally uninsurable. That could be right on the coast, depending on what type of property you have. So I want you to keep that and take that in consideration. Um, are you in an evacuation zone? These things matter, okay? So when it comes to her 
hurricanes, these are factors and considerations you wanna make. A lot of people choose to move inland away from the coast because they don't wanna deal with the risk or the, the concern, the fears they have about living near the ocean. And that is valid reason. And after living here for five years, y'all, the whole thing about having hurricane parties, that's real life. If if Waffle House doesn't close, then people just basically go about their life here. <laughs> it is very interesting. Now, for me and the family, we have made the decision that if it is category three hurricane or more, and it is projected to make landfall near the Tampa Bay area, we're going to leave, okay? We're gonna go inland, we're gonna go to Georgia, we're going to leave. now. I, I consider ourselves extremely fortunate in the, the respect that my job can be remote. I mean, I'm making content for you guys right now. Yes, we help people buy and sell real estate, but no one's doing that when during a hurricane. <laughs> so keep that in perspective. Um, because here's, here's the deal. I have a block home. Most of the homes that are in the greater Tampa Bay area are made of blocks. So standing up to the wind is good. My home is 28 feet above sea level, which for us is great. We're in a non-flood zone. We're in a non-evacuation zone, which is is awesome considering how close we are to the coast. Did you know that even existed? It does, we have that. So if you want more information, reach out. So that's a great thing. But my roof is made of wood. It, my roof is made of asphalt shingles. It can still come off and come apart. So we just made the decision that as a family, if we get to that point, we're taking obviously the kids, I'm taking the guitars you see behind me here, we're taking the dog and my computer. Outside of that, everything can be replaced through insurance. And um, you know, it that's just the decision we made as a family. If that is not for you and you are um, terrified of hurricanes or you're more risk adverse, first and foremost, you, you know, really think through that. Talk to people who live here, talk to people who have been through major hurricanes, you know, Andrews and Matthews, and there, you know, we have family that's lived through that stuff here in Florida. We have never been really challenged. Idalia came through last year. It flooded a lot of St. Pete, even though it did not hit Tampa proper. And then Ian was the one that we were supposed to get. I boarded up my house twice now in, in the last five years. And in all fairness, I don't have hurricane shutters and we don't have hurricane impact windows. We're taking care of that this year because I'm tired of boarding up the house. Um, but you know, those hurricanes were scheduled or projected to make it here to Tampa and they went elsewhere. And as you may or may not know, you know, our brothers and sisters to the south in Cape Coral and Fort Myers Beach took it on the chin, you know, from Hurricane Ian. So, you know, again, there is risk, but what we have found is it hasn't been as big of a deal as we thought it was going to be, but it absolutely is something we need to be vigilant about and mindful of. All right, the only thing hotter than the weather in Florida is the talk around traffic right now, and it is something to behold. Now, um, I want to share this with you because I it's interesting, right? When you move from somewhere else, you have a different perspective. You get to see different things. When you live in one area your whole life and maybe you don't travel a lot, your your perception of things can tend to get narrow. But let's be real. Your reality, your perception is your reality at the end of the day, right? And what I have found here, especially over the last three years, and uh, as as uh, Tampa Bay has just exploded and Florida has exploded, is the the talk about traffic has gone like exponential. If you looked on Google Trends, you would see it to be just immensely increasing on a day-to-day -day basis. And in our Facebook groups and everything we look at locally, there is just so much conversation regarding traffic. Now, that is for a lot of different reasons. There have been over 300,000 people who have moved to the state of Florida. Net inflow over the last three years alone. That is going to put a tremendous amount of strain on all the infrastructure. Whether you're in Jacksonville or Tampa or Orlando or Miami or any of these areas that are growing the way we are right now, they all feel this stress. And you know, I look in the groups and people say, you know, I used to live on Indian Rocks Beach. This is this is the beach we live right next to. And I could drive to Disney World in an hour, just over an hour. Well, that was 20 years ago. And have things changed? Absolutely. Can you make that same drive in an hour today? Nope, not a chance. Maybe if you went at 4 a.m. And if you, the funny part is if you Google at any time, it'll tell you it's only about an hour and a half. It takes almost two and a half or three hours every single time we make that drive. So the reality is, is we are facing more and more traffic. Um, also, something to take into consideration here in Tampa, where I live, you know, we're not even, I think we're the 30th ranked uh, metropolitan area in terms of congestion. 
that like y'all for those of you who are local who are complaining about it trust me we've got a ways to go and if you've traveled at all you know maybe you live in chicago or los angeles or um, you live in the northeast you know these areas have heavy heavy traffic and you're used to that but if you're from the south or you lived in you know the greater tampa bay area for the last 20 or 30 years it is really really intense and there are a few different reasons like i said number one people are moving from all over the world and all over the country and they're bringing their driving habits with them that's not necessarily always a good thing <laughs> <laughs> right? If you're used to making um, love hand turns a specific way where you live and you move here and now it's different, that causes stress. Okay. Another thing is we have a lot of visitors every single year. You add visitors and you add people who are new to the area and people tend to make slower decisions on the road. Well, they tend to make them while they're on the road and that usually is the problem, right? Um, another thing is we do have more seniors in the state of Florida than most other places. Now the greater Tampa Bay area where I live, you know, we're a pretty young area. Tampa on average is 36 years of age. When you come over into Pinellas County where I live, we're 46 years of age. When you go down into Sarasota County, it tends to go up to 56. And whether we like it or not, the insurance company charge new people and our seniors the most amount of money to drive on the roads. And it's because statistically speaking, they make the most mistakes. Not that they're not wise, right? So I wanna share this and in, in just be partial with the truth here. The other thing is the amount of, of lawyering that happens in the state of Florida was insane for a very long time. Now there has been some recent reform that it, I, it is going to have impact on our insurance rates in the positive direction. But because Florida is recognized, I believe we have the most uninsured motorists on the road in the entire country that of course affects our traffic, it affects our insurance, it affects everything around it. So when it comes to the greater greater Tampa Bay era and Florida, just be prepared for the fact that you are going to be challenged with slower traffic. Is it, you know, like, um, they're 405 in Los Angeles. No, not even close. Do we have um, those peak times where it slows down and it can be at a crawl? Yep, absolutely. It is no more free flowing from one end of a county to another or through downtown areas because Florida, people love moving here and they love being here. They visit, they move, and it, because of that, it puts a lot of strain on the system. Our traffic lights take a long time. I've shared this before. I swear you could knit a blanket at every single intersection. <laughs> I know it's not true, but you know, I came from a place where the lights were timed basically every 45 seconds to a minute at max. Um, now you're waiting through all four corners to go before you get your turn, even on major thoroughfares. Um, will northbound and southbound go at the same time at some point? Yes, but there is always a break where the left uh, turn lane gets to go on its own or two lanes. Um, it allows for a lot more traffic to clear through there, but it just takes longer to get through that. So just keep that in mind. When you look at drive times, you doctor Google anything, just add a few minutes if you're gonna be driving during peak times because you're gonna be challenged with the traffic. So the fact that you're taking time to watch this video or or maybe even subscribe to this channel tells me that you're serious about making the move to Florida. And we can't have a legitimate conversation about you making that move if we don't talk about the cost of living. And for years, Florida was known as the land of milk and honey for very little money. <laughs> it was literally, the cost of living here was so inexpensive compared to other areas, especially when you talk about coastal regions. And it was part of the reason that attracted us. When we started looking and making this move in 2018, 2017 is when we started our, our real search there the cost of living here was ridiculously low. Like when I looked at it, I was like, that can't be right. You know, I was looking at homes in Tampa that would cost me half the, the amount of money that they would cost in Metro Detroit. And I don't know if you know this or not, you know, the Metro Detroit area is not known as being one of the best in the country. You know, Detroit specifically, the Western suburbs where we lived are beautiful, some very desirable areas. But to get the same home, you know, up there was really expensive and our taxes were outrageous in, in, in that area as well. Now, it's not the same as, as everywhere, right? Like, you know, a $300,000 home in the area we were looking at at that time, you know, um, taxes were as high as $12,000 on our property. That's really high. I know there's people who live in California and New Jersey and Chicago who don't think that that's a whole lot of money. I can understand that. But when you look at Florida's taxes, people were paying $1,800, $2,200, for a $300,000 property. I mean, like these, 
these were insane numbers as I was looking at it. So, you know, it really was attractive to us, but things have changed over the last three and a half years. Again, over 300,000 people moving to the area. Florida has attracted more residents to the area who are making over $200,000 a year than anywhere else in the country. This, this state is on fire, literally. It is attracting everyone. And with that, people have come with big bank accounts or sold properties in areas like I discussed, right? Like the Pacific Northwest, they moved from Seattle, they moved from San Diego, they, you know, where their homes cost a million or a million and a half dollars, they're able to sell those homes. Maybe they only owed half of their mortgage and now they were able to come here and pay cash for homes. And we saw this explosion over the last three years. Our real estate values increased almost 80% since COVID took off, which is crazy when you think about that. Now, right now, Florida is ranked as the 15th most expensive state to live in the country. Um, our median sales price for a home here in the greater Tampa Bay area right now is $400,000. So it's just above the national average. But let's be real. If you're gonna move, let's say a family of four, now you can do this differently, right? Right? And I've done entire breakdowns and videos that, that focus on the cost of living. You can find those. I'll actually link one down below so you guys can check that out where I broke down our budget. But if you were going to move, let's say a family of four here, okay? Uh, again, if you're single, this is different. If it's only two of you, this is going to be different. But if you're going to move a family of four here from another area, um, you know, if the median home price is 400000 and that's the median, what we really see is about five hundred to 600 on average to be in a quote unquote good area. Um, you know, just to kind of get some perspective, you can spend way more than that. $20 million on a piece of luxury real estate here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Our luxury market is exploding. But if you just wanted to buy the average, you need to make over $110,000 a year to be able to afford that lifestyle, right? And that, again, that's how much money you would have to make, assuming you don't have a ton of debt. There's a lot of factors here, but the average person in a household here in the state of Florida, it costs about $50,000 per person to live here. That's with groceries, utilities, all the things. Now, I don't know what that number is for where you are or where you live. And again, you can do this for less, okay? But when I talk about these things, I'm not talking about surviving. Why would you ever move anywhere to survive? The goal um, of, of, of personally, my personal goal is to thrive, never just to survive. So, you know, but you have to look at those incomes. If the, the median home prices is 400 grand, you're going to have to make at least $100,000 in order to come down here, buy a house, right? That's, you know, if you got car payments, all of this changes. But I want to share this with you because we get asked this question all the time. I'll get people to ask to say, hey, I've got a family of three. I make 60 grand. You know, should I move to Florida? Well, I don't know your circumstances. <laughs> um, I don't know what your debt is, but I'm telling you right now, that would be very difficult. That to me would be surviving Florida. All right. Because groceries here aren't cheap. Um, they're not the most expensive. Again, we rank 15th. I There's a tool that I love to share with everybody, and it's called the Forbes Cost of Living Calculator. Um, this tool is awesome. Uh, you can put your where you live currently, what your current salary is, and compare it to Tampa, Jacksonville, Orlando, wherever you're considering moving, and it'll tell you how much money you need to make. Now, when it comes to jobs here in the area, Florida's booming. When you look at areas like Miami or Boca Raton, there are so many companies you know, relocating from the Northeast and bringing their business here. You know, um, Florida has been recognized as one of the most friendly business states in the entire country. As a matter of fact, they've ranked number one a few times. We also don't have a personal income tax, so that is something to take into consideration. Areas like Tampa also are growing like crazy. We're the unofficial tech hub of Florida. Um, one of every four jobs that that come in the state from tech are here. We're the number two destination for tech in the country currently in 2024. All of these things matter, right? Um, so when you're looking at the area, how does that stack up for you? You know, tech is a driver here in Tampa. Um, uh, medical is a driver. Financial institutions are another one. Government and education, those are the top five drivers of employment here in the area. We've got companies in defense, you know, with MacDill Air Force Base. We've got Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, uh, CAE, Honeywell, huge huge companies that, that handle uh, defense contracting around the United States. So a lot to love about here in the greater Tampa Bay area and Florida. Again, we're attracting a, um, a, a resident that is bringing a higher income to the area. That's part of what's putting pressure on people who used to live here. Again, utilities aren't necessarily cheap. I've shared all these things before. We spend about 350 bucks a month um, on our utilities on average. 
Uh, I have a 2,000 square foot home, four bedrooms, two baths with a pool. That's all of our utilities included. Um, not cheap. I don't consider that crazy expensive. I spent $500 on a heat bill in Metro Detroit before. so. I know what that's like as well, but wanted to share this with you. If you guys have more questions on this, do not hesitate to reach out. Like I said, all my contact information is down below. When it comes to cost of living, I really like to work with people specifically, you know, around what they're trying to accomplish. And then that can really help them hone in on areas that might fit that lifestyle, especially their unique budget. So the next thing I'm gonna share is another one of those things that I didn't know to ask that I wish I would have because this has dramatically impacted our quality of life. Let me just start by saying this. I still wouldn't trade living where I live for anything else, but <laughs> I would prefer to not have to deal with this. I'm just gonna be as transparent as I possibly can. And this is red tide. And if you've never heard of this before, what this is, is an algae bloom that is naturally occurring. And, and what happens is, is it, it, you know, this, this algae bloom will show up in warm bodies of water. I live next to the Gulf of Mexico, and that is a very warm body of water, especially during the summers. Um, and it feeds off of, you know, things like fertilizer and nitrogen and the stuff that we put in the ocean. Okay. Um, Florida is a very flat state for the most part, unless you live in central Florida, there are actually some hills out there. <laughs> um, I know most people think that it is dead flat, but it is not. But when you get by the coast, it most certainly is. And, you know, our county where I live in Pinellas County, which is where Clearwater St. Petersburg is in St. Pete Beach, it is crowned. The, the, the middle of the county is literally crowned. So as it rains and those types of things happen, our runoff naturally sheds into the Gulf of Mexico, the way it's designed to work, right? Well, 50, 100 years ago, people weren't you know, using fertilizers on their lawns like they do here. People love to have a beautiful lawn and that is okay, right? We didn't have as many people living here, so there wasn't as much waste, you know, and those things get into the Gulf of Mexico. Our waters are beautiful, right? Um, again, I don't test them. I'm not a biologist. I'm not here to make claims on those things. I just want to share that like this is part of the, the cycle of living here. And in the five years that we've lived here, two years, we had red tide so bad that we basically would not go to the beach. Now, if you don't care about the beaches and living in Florida, you know, that's not a priority for you, then what I'm saying doesn't even matter to you. But if you're a beach baby like we are and you want to be by the, the Gulf Coast, then this can present some problems. Some years it's worse than others. It doesn't just hang out in one specific spot. It kind of travels along with the tides, right? It travels, um, you know, along with the current. So these things can dramatically affect, you know, your quality of living if you want to live on the beach. Beach. Um, again, would it stop me from moving here? No. Do I wish I knew about it prior to coming here? Yes. Would it have influenced my decision? It could have. I'm just going to be real. It's been at varying degrees the entire time we've been here. Now, what it does is it kills a bunch of the marine life and it can affect the way that you feel because it's really hard um, on your respiratory system. You know, you can feel it. Like when you go down there, you can start to cough when it's really, really bad. Um, again, those aren't days when it's terrible. There are other times when it's just merely a nuisance. So this is something that I wish I knew before I moved down here that no one had told us. I didn't know to even research it. I'm sharing it with you because if you want to live on the Gulf beaches, anywhere in Florida, as a matter of fact, because this happens on both sides, um, um, but we have warmer waters here in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you know, this is something to take into consideration. So I just want to make sure that I bring this to you. That way you can make a qualified decision about making this move and making it a reality. All right, so this has been one heck of a list and I've already shared a few things that you should ask that I didn't know to ask and I hope that that's been helpful, but I wanted to give you this one thing that no one ever asked me that they should. And it all has to do with your ideal lifestyle. All the pros and cons about living in Florida, the cost of living, the insurance, all of those things, you know, the wildlife, we've got alligators and all those other things, you know, they're all strong considerations when you're considering making a move, especially if you're not familiar with things like this, because it can be overwhelming and quite frankly, it can be frightening. <laughs> We're talking about alligators, right? And the thing that I will say is this, um, in our experience, again, those things have not 
come to to life, right? They're they're not a real big deal. And you know, alligators specifically. I know we didn't talk about wildlife and pests, but like, listen, the mosquitoes aren't nearly as bad as people say they are. Um, and in some areas, they're they're really non-existent. Where I live, that's not a problem. I know there are areas that are. We have friends that live in low-lying areas that are like swampy, and of course, you're gonna get chewed up by mosquitoes. Don't choose that spot, right? If you're worried about flooding, don't choose a flooding zone, right? Like these are things you can just avoid. If you're con really concerned about hurricanes, don't live by the coast, move inland. That'll really take some edge off for you. But the question that you should be asking is, Juan, hey, look, I want to make a move to Florida. Maybe we are on a Zoom call. You know, you tell me what your ideal lifestyle is. And the question you need to ask from that point is, what are the ideal communities? What are the communities that match my ideal lifestyle? That is the question. What are the communities that match my ideal lifestyle? And I'm telling you right now, that question for you is a game changer. If you want to dig into that, if you want to know my, my takes on Florida, if you have questions you want to dig deep, do not hesitate to reach out to me and the team. Like I said, all my contact information is listed down below, even the link to my calendar so you can schedule the time that's most convenient. YouTube's going to put two videos up here that they think that are going to really help you make this decision. And until next time, I hope you go out and live that Tampa life. Thank <laughs> you.